I've witnessed the the complete maturation of, of this company, and it's the only thing I can compare it to is is growing up. You know, the same thing that we all went through as kids going through adolescence and then becoming adults is, is how I look at this company. When I started with Valley Waste in 2003, we were a mom and pop. We were a startup. We were in an office in Ybor City that was basically three or four rooms and, you know, the boardroom had one of those stand-up uh, lamps that didn't even have an overhead light. And as we succeeded and became the product of our own success, we became an emerging business and we got on the radar of Oak Leaf Waste Management and then ultimately on the radar of New Mountain Capital. And, and now I, I feel like we're, we're more than an emerging business. We're, we're a powerhouse. We're the fastest growing company in our portfolio. We're one of the fastest growing companies in the country and we probably are the fastest growing company in our industry. So the contributions that I think Valley Waste is making to the multifamily industry is, is multifamily historically waste. If you look at our very general value proposition, waste is mismanaged. And, and that's, believe it or not, the, the way that I came to this business was the no-brainer for me was single-family homes versus multifamily. You know, single-family homes have a, a trash truck that shows up on the curbside once or twice a week and you move into an apartment where you've got all these A-plus amenities, the pool, the fitness center, the, the coffee bar, all these things, but yet you have to lug a bag of trash from your door down to a dumpster or compactor. And I immediately saw that value in Valet Waste. And so I think at a very organic, you know, 17 years ago, that was the initial catch. And as we've matured as a business, our value proposition has matured. We're not just taking that trash from the doorstep to the dumpster. We're diverting recycling out of the waste stream uh, into the recycling stream. We're making landfills smaller. The, all the labor, the maintenance plus services that we're offering, we're adding these man hours. It, it really is. It's like I said earlier, it, we are maturing and growing up as a business, and it's exciting. I think Valley Waste is, is poised for success. And I almost, I want to take a macro approach on that. It's not so much the company as it is the culture change that we've been through. And this is any industry, any company. When you're not being led from behind, when you're not allowing competition to lead you and find the next new, when you're open to almost pick on yourself, call your own baby ugly per se, and say, what can we do better? What should we be doing better? Where should we be looking? What should we be getting into? When I started, we were a doorstep trash company and a small one at that. And now we're a technology company and we're a labor company. I mean, there's so many things. We're not scared to look at anything. We've got district managers. We've got regional sales executives. We've got corporate employees that are bringing us ideas that this executive team says, yeah, we'll look at it. And most of the time we pilot it. So it's not, it's not so much the industry or, or what we do as much as it is the culture and the mentality of just saying, why not? We have such a, I mean, think about it. We see possibilities. <laughs> We do. We see possibilities in everything. We want to try anything and everything that's going to bring value, not just to this company, but to this company's employees, their stakeholders, and the folks that choose to do business with us. What excites me about this company is the people that we attract. This week is, is I know I'm, I'm timing this, but this week is our 2014 kickoff meeting. And I couldn't be any more excited. I had my wife, I had friends, family laughing at me because of my excitement. Because the people that this organization seems to attract are, I always say it's two things. It's conviction and momentum. It's, it's these people that walk in the room and they're convicted human beings. They've got firm footing and they've got the momentum to lead other people to their cause. And that's addicting. Those people, I'm addicted to them. And that's why I represent this company as the people that are going to be watching this video. It's a brotherhood. You know, sales and operations to me, unfortunately, as we've grown, has become a bit disconnected. And that's the theme for 2014 is to bring sales and operations back together. One voice, one company, one culture. It's the chicken or the egg conversation. You can't have one without the other. We don't have anything to sell without that operations team, that really good operations team out there performing that service and, and keeping our brand up where they do. So it, it's critical. Uh, I think when we were a smaller company, it was easier because you had less people. But we have to put some indicators in our process to get our district managers and our regional sales executives back in the car together. They need to own their business. They need to own their market. They need to own that relationship with that property manager and that maintenance supervisor. That's the only way we're going to win the day on a go forward.
Yeah, our near-term challenges are are really from a sales organization, and and you know where my heart is with our sales organization are twofold. The the two main challenges that we see from a sales organization are uh, overcoming the competitive threat in our adopted markets, because the, the more successful we become, the more competitors we have, and and it's also that open-mindedness to watch them and and find out if they're truly differentiating, if they're doing something better, or if they even have the mindset to do something better, or if they're just trying to build a business to compete for a little bit and hope they sell to us. And then the second real challenge that's that's we're focused on today is is achieving adoption in new markets. It's, you know, how do we tackle the wild Midwest? How do we tackle the wild West? How do we get adoption in California and Indianapolis the same way that we have in Atlanta and Dallas and Orlando?